Oh, good. Okay, so you can hear the music, but hi! Hi, everybody! Ah, I'm so excited to play with you guys, but I'm also just so confused as to why my audio is not working. Um, can you hear my music? Hi, Frosty! Hi, Ghosty! Hi, Nainonic9! Hi, Random Coon! Hi, Rick Therio! I've been practicing. Hi, Butter! Hi, Fro Hi, Meryl! Okay, so you can hear my mic, but can you hear the smooth lo-fi jazz in the background? <laughs> I hope so. Oh, good. Okay, so you can hear the music, but why? Okay, so can't hear the music. All right. Well, if you can't hear the music, then uh, then maybe I will just have to. I'm just gonna have to sing to you. Um, that's gonna be awful. Uh, <laughs> let's try to fix that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Hi, hi, Vog. Well, that's poop. Oh, wait, can you faintly hear music? Should I do this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Singing would be, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a yell screamer, so it's just kind of, uh, it's, it's just me going, wah! Uh, uh, like a, like a very scared and dying pigeon. Um, and I feel like we don't want that to happen. Hi, Finality! Um, but we do want a little bit of tunage in the back, right? Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a boring stream. Uh, up, 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 up. Maybe, maybe I can do that a little bit? How are we doing there, guys? Um, if I do like this... Well, I love how I advertise this as 10% uh, as less scuff, and now it's just 10% uh, more scuff, if, if you feel me. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but no, we're going we're gonna to make this work. Okay, hold on. Two, two seconds. Oh, you can hear it now? Great. Awesome. Okay, great. And then uh, you guys let me know when the levels are meh. Thanks, Percy. I appreciate it. I feel like everybody on this, on this, uh, any, at least everybody who's in chat knows that that Percy's a great another ASM artist. Um, uh, Vog Persona, you should go give him a listen. He's really fun. Thanks, Frosty. All the good streams do have scuff. Okay, cool. So we can uh, we can do a little transitioning mission over here. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh, transition. And now you can see my PNG. Exciting. Uh, hi everybody, thanks for joining the stream. I really appreciate it. Um, I am excited to play more of Touch Starved with you if you're excited to play more of Touch Starved with me. Uh, previously on Dragon Ball Z, uh, we were playing Touch Starved and basically what happened was we met two of the dudes on Touch Starved. We met a dude who's, uh, I think he's a Kitsune, Kitsune uh, boy, and he's nice. We met another guy named Leander and he seems like a cool dude who uh, he can we can touch him for some reason. Oh wait, I should roll all the way back. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the main character of Touch Starved, she can't touch anyone. We're calling her Clover. Clover can't touch anyone. She's got like a weird touching disease that makes someone turn crazy instantly. So uh, we met a doctor who kind of helped us out. He's very angelic and beautiful. And uh, I think that's everything. Do I have any other updates? Oh, a huge thank you to all my members. Um, who've joined the channel thank you so much you'll see them with their green their green uh names on the chat uh and a huge huge thank you to everybody who's joined my patreon i really appreciate that i'm um having a lot of fun getting content out and you guys make that possible and i hope that uh i hope the roi is good for you okay <laughs> i suppose we should get started uh moving over here Whoop. I think we're gonna go to, let's see, what were we using? Oh, the other poop thing is that the music in Touch Starved is all copywritten. So you're gonna have to have a very awkward soundtrack and uh, and everyone's just gonna have to be real cool with that. Everyone's gonna have to be real cool with the idea of a real awkward soundtrack. Uh, so if, uh, you know, if you don't like that, maybe wait till the next game because I'm going to try to find another game that doesn't have copyrighted music all over the place. Uh, but let's go for some some funness. <laughs> Ew, ROI talk. I know, gross. Everybody hates rhinos over investigators or 
really off official it was I don't know I'm not good at that also I'm drinking my ice drink um okay so let's get to it let's get to it and you guys let me know if the levels are okay uh cause cause I don't know mine I don't know okay um let's continue last time oh also last time on Dragon Ball Z we forgot to save uh like a big part into this and uh, that was kind of silly. Anywho, here we go. <clears throat> this time, the key goes into my coin purse for safekeeping. That's right, the, the kitsune tried to steal it from us. It's easy enough to follow the sluggish river that splits Iridia in two. A colossal bridge arches over the dark water below. I cross as quickly as I can, climbing ever uphill toward the distant tower. Oh, she's going to the Cenobium because she thinks that they can cure her like touching curse. Hours later, legs aching, sweat beating on my forehead, I finally find what I was searching for. The Cenobium of the Lumia. L Wait, it's red text. I feel like we need intense music. Uh, there we go. That feels more intense to me. The Cenobium of the Luminous Void. It stands at the highest point of Iridia, surrounded by cold white walls. Well-dressed people stroll down the walkways, paying no attention to the massive tower in their midst. I'm the only one standing before the gates. I crane my neck up and up. Nope. I crane my neck up and up until the top of the Cenobium Tower disappears into the clouds overhead. Hi, Darth Party Man. Uh, oh yeah, you've kind of entered at the middle of this game. Well, it's, it's a little like, uh, it's a... It's an Otome game where we are dating monster boys. Um, and by we, I mean me, Clover. Hi, Big Z. <laughs> I'm so glad you could make it. Uh, here we go. I frown up at the gates, wondering what horrible traps they might contain. Despite their delicate beauty, there must be more to them than meets the eye. Hi, Zodia. Ooh, red text and regular comments like this are just important stuff. Red text. Thank you. I appreciate the lore. Yes, thank you. Knocking seems like a terrible idea, but I don't see any other way of making my presence known. I'm halfway up the steps when something moves in my peripheral vision. A shadowy figure crouches beneath one of the white walls. They reach out and tug on a vine as if testing its strength. Oi, you there! The shadow vanishes as quickly as I spotted it, and a gaunt-faced man in a crisp charcoal uniform marches up the steps towards me. Ugh, another tourist! I cannot do accents. If you're ready for accents, get ready for this one. Ugh, another tourist! Get out of here once you're done gawking! A dismissive wave accompanies his equally dismissive words, and he turns on his heel without even waiting for an answer from me. I look back at what I saw... <laughs> I look back at where I saw the intruder... But there's nothing, just the leaves blowing gently in the cool breeze. Whoop. I step away from the gates, hopelessness washing over me. Dot dot ooh, I hope this isn't a I hope this isn't one of the people that we're trying to date. Um <laughs> You have to so Zodia says that you have to earn red text when it comes to choices. What does that mean? <gasps> I don't know what that means, but I'm really excited because I, I love earning things. <laughs> um, okay, uh, uh, we're just gonna say hello. A whisper, so close I can feel the warm blur brush of, of breath on my skin. <laughs> that was not a whisper. I instinctively jerk away, but there's no one beside me. Halfway down the staircase, I spot a woman swaying in the breeze. She's gaunt as a rail, her blouse moth-eaten. I'm unable to take my eyes off her. Not because of the way she smiles a little too widely, or the way her tousled braids look unbrushed for days, but because her eyes shine a vibrant, unnatural crimson. I'm both entranced and unsettled by their subtle glow. Red-eyed woman. Well, she's got red eyes. I mean, what is she doing? I think we know. Use regular choices you need. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure he wants to date. <laughs> yes, rewards. Um, <clears throat> let's see, red-eyed woman. How are we going to make her sound? She's smiling too big. Um, These days, you'd need a miracle to get in there. 
I'm unsure of how to respond or even if I should. I'm gonna... You know, it's best to ignore them. After the experience I've just had, I'm not too keen on indulging strangers with small talk. Despite my silence, she maintains her unflinching stare and smile. Lucky for you, I have miracles for free. Whatever she's selling, I'm not interested. My words come out in a tired breath. No thanks. I start down the stairs, but she abruptly steps into my path. She turns her back to me, and before I can react, she slips her fingers under the lacing of her collar, stripping out of her blouse in broad daylight. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, dear. Not in broad daylight, though. <laughs> what, what are you do- as, fabric, as worn fabric unveils bare skin, my panic is smothered by cold horror. A misshapen, sunken scar carves into the woman's body. Pitted, gnarled skin snakes down her shoulders, blooming from a gaping hole in the back of her neck. A shuddering breath escapes me. The fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, the, that F-bomb came out of nowhere, but also apt. Oh, hey, Indeed! Uh, Indeed is also a really amazing VA, too. Hi, how you doing? Um, yeah, so also, hey, she was stripping down in front of us. Whatever disease this woman had ate away at her from the inside out, how is she able to move or breathe? It's impossible. She shouldn't be alive, and yet... The power to cure anything can be yours, too. The power of the sea spring. The woman slides back into her blouse and deftly laces it up. If I've caught your interest, then follow me. It's only a short walk away. That's a real, she's got to work on her sales pitch. I don't know if this works on many people to just be all like, look at my gross back, now follow me. Without another glance, she leisurely strolls down the Cenobium stairs, loose braids bobbing behind her. The edge of her scar peeks out from her under her collar. <laughs> I stand there, wordless, until I manage to regain my bearings. It's a twisted miracle, but a miracle nonetheless. Nonetheless? This could be the stupidest decision in my life, but what choice do I have? I have... I, I... Well, I don't... I don't... Okay, main character Clover, I'm not sure. I think that there's always... Do we really want to follow the lady? Do we really want to follow Red-Eyed Lady? I feel like this is a very interesting choice that we have made. Hi, Jariah! Hi, hi, hi! Hope you're doing good. Um... I think, uh... <laughs> okay, well, we're... I guess we're gonna follow this lady. <clears throat> I take a final look at the Cenobium's shut gates, then follow her down the steps. We descend from the higher streets, leaving behind their gilded decadence as we, as we cross the river. The wet, derelict districts feel more familiar to me, but the crimson-eyed woman takes me farther, then farther still, until I'm met with an all-too-familiar sight. My gut lurches when I face the open horizon. Hi, Jack. Oh, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Good to see ya. Um, oh yeah, this is where we got, uh, at the beginning of the game, if you weren't here last time, uh, the main character had her arm ripped off, but then she met the hot doctor, and he somehow sewed that back on for her. And this is where it happened. Um, I, I make that sound really happy. I should really give that the weight that it deserves of, like, seriousness. Uh, but, but, uh, but that's, that's just how we gotta roll. <laughs> Yeah, she's definitely not trying to kill me. Absolutely. She's, this is real, this is real, um, this, all of this is very legit. The city's outskirts are hardly recognizable in daylight and probably safer for it. But venturing beyond Iridia's walls is a gamble I wasn't prepared to take so soon. Oh, oh my gosh, Ghosty, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for the, thank you for the super chat. Big, big appreciations there. Um, thank you, Ghost. You guys are so sweet. Just the best. Um, <laughs> thanks, ghost. Uh, <laughs> keep, oh, I didn't read the lady. <laughs> oh, thank you. Big W's, yeah. Big, big happy faces. But also, it just, every time that happens, that just kind of throws me for a loop. And then I have to reset myself. And then you guys have to hear me clear my throat 5,000 times. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear someone clear a throat. Okay, okay. <clears throat> oh, no, see, I just did it unknowingly. 
no more throat clearing. That was part of my 10% less scuff notes. I was like, don't clear your throat so much. That is irritating. Uh, okay. Not clearing my throat, but getting ready. Um, I keep going straight, and the sea spring will reveal, reveal itself to you. I bark out a bitter laugh, loud and involuntary. This is a setup. I've fallen for this already. Not that I'm proud of it, but I know a setup when I see one. I barely have enough coin for a meal for what it's worth. If I wanted your coin, I would already have it. She says it so lightly, I almost believe her. Even if she looks as physically capable as a toothpick. You're as safe inside the city as outside of it. Truthfully, the territory before you is the safest of all. What do you mean, territory? This region belongs to Eyes. Most people know him as a gang leader, but he's much more than that. I had to look up the name pronunciations. Hi, Striker Prime. Good to see ya. <laughs> Throat clearing is music to my ears. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, this game is going... To oh, it is going to have voice acting in it. Oh, I would love voice acting. But also, I love voice acting. What if the voices, I don't like them? No, but I, sometimes I don't like myself. Listen, I am now in a weird mental, do I want this or do I not want this? I absolutely want this. I cannot wait to hear what these guys sound like. Okay, 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 moving on. Dot, dot, dot. I squint against the empty wastelands. Only a fool or someone with nothing left to lose would leave the city. Apparently I'm both. But if this sea spring cured her, I need to see what it can do for me. I set off into the wastes. Over my shoulder, the woman calls out after me. Good luck, Clover. I hope we meet again. <laughs> um, I put that laugh in there because it fell right. Also, did we tell her our name? My heart pounds with each step I take from civilization. For what seems like an eternity, I force each foot forward. One step, then another. Until a realization hits me. I never told the woman my name. Something pierces the horizon ahead of me. A building, nestled into a tall cliffside, but so starkly out of place it might as well be a hallucination. It drips with extravagance and honeyed mahogany, an ornate jewel of architecture. A row of dark silhouettes stand out on the horizon. Trees, I think, until I'm close enough to realize that what I mistook for branches were spikes and jutting tendrils. Soulless. Several of them watch me in the distance like statues. Side note, soulless are the monsters. I don't think. I just run, exploding into a messy sprint. I push my legs as fast as they'll take me towards that decorated building. Flashes of light chase flashes of night chase me. Flashes of last night, sorry. Flashes of last night chase me. The gushes of blood and screams of death. The smell of burning flesh and sour bile. I can't go through that again. I won't. The next thing I know, I'm dashing up the wooden steps and crashing... Th Ooh. The next thing I know, I'm dashing up the wooden steps and crashing through towering double doors. Okay. I'm a okie dokie. Let's change the music. Um... Oy. <laughs> I gasp for air, my lungs burning from exertion. I'm desperate to be safe, but when I process my surroundings... It's more hellscape than sanctuary. Blood flows all around me, overwhelming my vision with a lurid, unholy red. Instinctively, my hands leap to my mouth. My hand leaps to my mouth. But the rotten stench of blood never comes. Instead, a smoky scent hangs in the air, sharp and spiced. I swallow thickly, convincing myself that it's not as gruesome as it appears. This has to be the sea spring, the place that grants miracles. Pulling my eyes away from the pool, I take in the rest of my environment. Tall pillars flank me, blanketed in written notes, seating pillars. Psst, pillars? <laughs> Yeah, this is fine. Uh, blood, everything's cool. This is fine. I am desperate for a cure to my touch. And gosh darn it, if that's going to take a bloody spring, we're going to go to bloody springs. 
Also, I am drinking um, what is probably a bad decision, an iced coffee. What is everyone else having this evening? Hopefully something that's not uh, so caffeinated. <laughs> I like the environments, too. <clears throat> Seating pillows scatter the floor. A rustic kettle sits nearby. Someone must live here, despite how eerily empty it is. Oh, well, we're going to call out. We're going to call out. Because it's, I mean, if we go get got, we go get got. You know what I mean? Hello? Is anyone here? My voice echoes across the cavern without response. I approach the paper-covered pillars. Maybe something here can tell me more. I reach for... I'm a shorty, so we're gonna go for the closest one. I reach for a note in front of me. It reads, Dear Mother, don't cry for me. I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye, but we'll meet again in another life. I love you very much. From Iris. P.S. <laughs> don't put a P.S. on your goodbye letter. <laughs> P.S. If you ever see me, never speak to me again. It's written in perfect cursive. I've never seen such beautiful handwriting. Before I can ponder it further, a sharp chill runs down my spine. Someone's watching me. I quickly set the note back, my eyes darting around the wooden deck, but it's still empty, vacant. Finally, I look towards the sea spring. That stillness hides something deeper, something wrong. Ooh, this has got to be this. Okay, this has got to be um, this has got to be eyes. This has got to be the boy that I think is going to be uh, the boy. If you, I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be a crush. He just seems like he's a big problem. He seems like the biggest of red flags, so therefore he might be, um, best. We're gonna change it to this one. <clears throat> hey. I spin around and come face to face with a pack of solace. Oh, well, nope, never mind, just kidding. It's the monsters. They chitter and growl, tendrils and spikes flaring threateningly, all different sizes and species, but sharing one identical trait, glowing crimson eyes. I try to brip, I try to back away, but my heel teeters over the sea spring. I'm cornered. This has gotta be, this has gotta be the guy, okay. Watch your step. It's closer. It's no, I can't even do it. I'm like flustered myself. I have flustered myself. Um, <laughs> watch your step. It's deeper than it looks. That voice again. At the sound of it, the soulless freeze, their snarls quieting. Oh, they listen to. Yes! Here he is! <laughs> um, teehee, giggle, teehee. I search for the voice's source and find it above me, lounging in the rafters. Hi! Oh no, you're gonna be such a problem. You're gonna be such a problem. Gross. Uh, but like in a good way, gross. Gross for me. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to be flustered. <laughs> um, I always appreciate it. Damn, that cleavage on him. Yes, he has quite the cleave. Quite the cleave. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Red flags, Mitchell. <laughs> Everybody's just standing in the background, just giant red flags waving in the back. Like, okay, well, listen, this is a problem, all right? We're already in the blood spring. Let's not. Let's not. And he's got tentacles in the background. Goodness. <clears throat> you look lost, little sparrow. His gaze is a violent crimson. One that sears through me, leaves me feeling raw and exposed. Indeed. Uh... Oh. I, I say indeed, and I forget that indeed still might be in the channel. <laughs> so, that might be me. That's me saying indeed, not your name, but if you're still here, that's cool. <laughs> um, I can fix him the game. Oh yeah, it totally is. It absolutely is. I can fix him the game. <laughs> Welcome to I can fix him the game. First up on our show today. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, and then I started doing the throat clearing thing. Yeah, that comes with nervousness and fluttering color guard only red flags <laughs> they're the same eyes I've seen over and over first with a scarred woman now with the soul is circling me all bound by the sea springs blood red in the shroud of darkness behind him shapes like massive tentacles twist and coil the wooden beams 
Ooh. Yeah, this is, uh, we should, oh man, it's too late to run. She knows she did. She knew as soon as she followed the scarred woman that it was going to be a problem. So, um, so yeah, we've accepted fate. <clears throat> I can't focus. The Solus's growls ring in my ear. They're not advancing and that could change at any second. Panic rises in my throat as I struggle to track them. Hey. Eyes on me. My stomach rolls as I tear my eyes away from the Solus. Don't ignore someone who's talking to you. It's not polite. For a moment, anger knocks my fear aside. Who is this bastard? In yeah, who is this bastard? <laughs> yeah, screw this dude. Fuck you. I look right into his unnerving eyes, holding his gaze defiantly. Fuck you, is that better? A crooked grin cracks across his face. We'll work on it. <laughs> his name is Bastard. I scan the Solus again. They really aren't attacking, posturing more than anything else, almost as if they're waiting for commands. Did you tame them? Power of the Sea Spring. They're hungry, so they might bite. You could give me a reason not to stop. Oh, you could give me a reason to stop them. How about I didn't do anything wrong? Trespassing. And that's punishable by death? He gives a non-committal shrug. I called out earlier to see if anyone was here. Were we supposed to play hide and seek? Hmm. Didn't hear you. My voice stops in my throat. This man's terse coolness is both infuriating and terrifying and alluring and alluring. I rack my brain for a way to defuse the situation. Oh, see, this is this is one of the things I hate about choices because in my head I've re I've read I read these in different ways. So if I did the first one, it would be like there's like three ways you could do it. Like I need help or I need help. You know, both of those have like different feelings and then like the the tell me what you want could be the same, right? It could be pleading or like frustrated, like uh it could be tell me what you want or tell me what you want. We're going to we're going to go with that one. We're going to assume let's hope that it's like a grumpy voice cuz that's how I would be. We're going to go full sundere with this guy. Tell me what you want. I'm not in the mood for guessing games. Your hands. <laughs> Alarm jolts through me. I hide my hands under my cloak. Show me. Why? Won't ask twice. With a sharp puff, I reluctantly hold out my bandaged hands. Are you getting off on this? Unwrap them. Heat rushes to my face and fire to my tongue. I should give him a piece of my mind, but not when his soul is our one command from ripping me to shreds. Yet no matter how much I will myself to move, my body is frozen in place. I stand there for a long, agonizing minute. My hands are trembling when I finally raise them. I know the skin beneath the wrappings all too well. The hideous, unnatural flesh I've grown to despise. I grip the edge of the bandages. Stop. With a weary sigh, the man slides off the beam and lands on <laughs> lands with a thud that shakes the panels underfoot. Sorry, I feel like I've ignored chat a lot. Anything crazy happen over here in chat? Everybody, we're all being cool? Great, okay. And just making uh, making fun of my, my silliness with the way that I'm being so flustered. Uh, Meryl, I should roll the dice, right? Uh, my biggest weaknesses are alpha males, and he's 1,000% one. I'm an alpha female, so I need a strong man who can handle me. Yeah, same. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what my biggest weakness is. It, it might just be, it might just be them, them bad for you boys. <laughs> he's a monster with an imposing figure that towers over me. I couldn't tell how tall he was before, but he's big. <laughs> Sorry, but he's big. Um, illuminated by lantern light, his features are stronger, sharper. Subtle clinks of metal accompany each of his footsteps. The closer he gets to me, the faster my heart hitches. What does he want? Is he going to kill me? I step backwards and find nothing to set my foot on. I'd forgotten my back was to the sea spring. I fall right before a warm hand catches my lower back. 
I'm hovering above the sea spring, a scent of smoke and leather enveloping me. Blazing crimson eyes bore into mine. Told you to watch your step. I'm too stunned to muster a response. Like I wait nothing, he guides me back to solid ground and steps back. Following a subtle gesture from his fingers, the soulness around us disperse and relax. <laughs> They shift. <laughs> the shift in their demeanor is so abrupt, it gives me whiplash. The enormous tentacles are no longer in the rafters, though now I doubt I ever saw them. Either way, I exhale a breath of relief. Ethereal, my biggest weakness? Probably a scary clown that wants to give me a PS5. Clowns are indeed um, uh, unfair. Like, I don't think that they should really be here. They're super, super spooky and scary. I think the first time that I read it, I couldn't sleep for months. Oh, I forgot to say, thanks. As focused on me as he was before, the monster pays no attention to me now. He kicks some seating pillow out of the seating pillows out of the walkways, checks the contents of the kettle with a scowl. The sudden disregard is almost insulting. So that's it? I'm not a threat anymore. Never were one. Oh no! I hate that he says stuff like, but I also like it. Dear, uh, the flustering. Nah, those tentacles were there for sure, MC. Yeah, those tentacles were absolutely 100% there. Uh, <clears throat> then why do you threaten me? People get honest when they're afraid. In other words, he was messing with me. I drag a hand over my face, exhausted by the fact that this is the second time a monster has provoked me today. Your eyes, aren't you? Depends on who's asking. One of your friends told me this was your territory. She also said you were a gang leader. But there's no one else here. I thought there'd be more people. Eyes picks up the kettle and walks to the edge of the sea spring, then dumps out the contents. I didn't read it, I clicked too fast. Gang took a walk. His pleasant smile stretches across his face, ear to ear. Then, in an instant, it drops. I get the sense that I shouldn't ask about his gang again. Something must have happened. I've learned to recognize a real leader when I see one. Eyes, regrettably, fits the type perfectly. He knows how to scare people, and he expects submission. <laughs> uh, I hate that I'm giggling so much at this. Um, <laughs> chat, I'm going over to check on you guys while I have a little, little drinky poo. How are you doing? I hope you're doing okay. I want to have a little, little vote going at some point. Thanks for coming, Percy. See you. He's dangerous, but intriguing. Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, ace. Ace. Oh, ace. Not A's. Eyes. Ace. Okay. Glad I checked the chat. Um, I Ace. Well, I hope I didn't insult him by pronouncing his name incorrectly the first time. <laughs> what do you need the Sea Springs power for? It depends. Can it cure a curse? Probably. You mean you don't know? Nope. He shakes out the empty kettle and starts collecting stray cups, tidying up. My frustration builds up. I narrow my eyes at him in a questioning glare. When he notices, he returns it with an amused smirk. Are you being irritating on purpose? Listen, Sparrow. The sea spring can cure anything. Nothing's stopping you from trying it yourself. Oh no, that seems like a terrible idea. What do I have to do? drink I have to drink from the sea spring we're gonna change music just because I think that's gotta help a little bit may I my eyes glide to the blood like pool beside us the idea of ingesting the strange liquid makes my guts churn is there a price always ace taps his temple with a finger you lose a little bit you lose it a little bit that's it? Might have already beat it to the punch. My humor earns me an amused, fanged grin. Fangs? Hmm. This is a little different. When you drink from the sea spring, you forget who you are. Your mind combines with everyone who ever drank before. Humans, monsters, soulless. One big happy family in your head. My blood runs cold. I've heard of these before. Group minds. 
I thought they were just rumors. I've heard whispers of cults performing rituals to bind their members' minds together. It never seemed possible. But something tells me this is real, even if one thing doesn't add up. Your eyes are red, too, but you obviously haven't forgotten who you are. Before I can finish my sentence, Ace strides past, past me towards the entrance. Time's up. Let's finish this later. Wait, already? You barely told me anything. Came on a bad day. I've got somewhere to be. There are still so many questions burning on the tip of my tongue, but my frustration spills out before any of them. I was told to come here for help, but instead I get threatened and kicked out? You're joking, right? Watch your tone. I'm nice, but you don't want to ruin the host's mood. My skin prickles. The feeling of being watched washes over me again. My eyes dart back over to the sea spring. A lone ripple dances on the quiet surface. I take Ace's advice and clamp my mouth shut. Ace approaches a nearby Solus, a lanky, dog-like one with six legs and a crown of tendrils. Several sets of crimson eyes adorn its sides. <laughs> Bloodborne Toon is actually a dating sim. <laughs> I come over to chat just to see that Bloodborne 2 <laughs> is a dating sim. Bloodboard 2 is a dating sim. Huzzah! Uh, actually, I'd love to play more dating sims. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. Its forked tail wa wags uh. Its forked tail wags repeatedly when Ace squats beside him. He runs his fingers through the tendrils, scratches its chin, and pats its head. A gentle smile plays across Ace's lips. The affection he holds for the solace is painfully clear. I dip my eyes away, my stomach fluttering at the tender sight. It's getting dark out, so this pretty girl will guide you back. Following a short whistle from Ace's lips, it trots over to the entrance obediently, tail wagging, swaying. <laughs> it's a puffer! I watch the solace warily. Pretty is not a word I would use to describe it, and the idea of it protecting me sounds absurd. If I decide to drink, how should I find you? Find someone with eyes like mine. They'll point you in the right direction. But think it over. Once you drink, you can't go back. It's a lot to process, but I give a small nod. At least I know I have another option for a cure, as disturbing as it may be. I follow the solace at a measured distance and watch it nudge the giant doors open with ease. When I'm about to cross the threshold, I sneak one last glance behind me. My heart skips when I meet Ace's eyes. Ace's eyes. I'm about to snap my head away, but he just flashes me an easy smile. Till next time, Sparrow. I'll buy you a drink for scaring you. Yeah, you better buy me a drink, sir. You better. Absolutely 100% buy me a drink. Ooh, I'd love... Uh, <laughs> Colonel Sanders one is fire. Um, I would love to do some more dating sims. Yeah, I also don't think I would drink from the spring, but I, I hope that drinking from the spring doesn't make it, like, I hope that drinking from this, I, I don't think I would choose to lose myself. I do a lot of stuff that I don't want others to know about, so uh, having a lot of people in my brain want to do those things would be like, uh-oh, hey guys, sorry. Um, but I hope that's, like, not part of the romancing him option, like, you'd have to do it. Bro said it's Modelo time. <laughs> Um, I don't trust myself to do anything but respond with another curt nod. Yep, that's 100%. Yep, 100% Clover. Class of 07. Ooh. I have to look it up. Oh, I feel like they were playing that on the server. Maybe, I think, I think it's the one that, like, I probably couldn't play on YouTube, but I could still play. Outside, more Crimson Eye Solas scuttle around. It's hard to believe it's the same threatening pack from before. They chase each other in circles, roll around in the bog's mud. They pay no attention to me, as the dog-like one escorts me away. It's an uneventful trip. Sometimes the solace looks over its shoulder at me to make sure I'm still following. Dusk darkens the sky by the time we reach the city. The solace sits and looks at me expectantly, with familiar crimson eyes. We're going to pet it. We're going to pet that little pupper. As nervous as I am, I carefully glide my fingers through the solace's tendrils and scratch just beneath its chin, just like Ace had. 
it pushes in, <laughs> it pushes into my palm in response, rumbling with a sound akin to a purr. The vibrations are soothing, almost healing my fatigue. When it's satisfied, the solace spins around and scampers back in the direction we came in the direction we came, vanishing into darkness. Oh yay, people wanted to pet. Also, oh, I see lots of surprise and blushy faces. Did something happen? Oh, yeah, that's true. Demos are okay for options, for sure. Oh, touches on... Okay, so class of 07, but at least it's not prawn. Hey, respawn! Welcome, welcome. Glad you could join. Yeah, I also think it's, I, I do enjoy that they're not just mindless monsters. Now I have a weird, um, it's easier to hate things when they're just monsters. How dare this be varied and in, in depth with its plot. Um, it's barely my first day in Iridia and I've already encountered so many things I thought were impossible. Tame Solus being one of them. My head spins. Maybe I should call it a day. I'm doing okay, Respawn. Thank you. I'm very content with my iced coffee. Nightfall creeps across the streets of Iridia. Let's find something else. Maybe, uh, this? This sounds eerie. Because now it's nighttime. Nightfall creeps across the streets of Iridia. The city labyrinthine even in the, day in the daytime. In the, in daytime. There's no the there. The city labyrinthine? Labyrinth? We're just going to keep going. In daytime has become a warren of treacherous alleyways. <laughs> The streets are completely deserted. If I hadn't been here earlier, I would have thought this part of the city abandoned. I make my way through the winding streets, doing my best to keep my bearing towards the wet wick. Oh, I forgot this what they called the bar. <clears throat> my steps slow when I hear a rustling in the dark. I strain my ears, but everything is still. Is the silence playing tricks on me? Something's wrong. Something's wrong. We've been in this game too long, and something is always wrong. The fine hairs on the back of my neck prickle, a friction of discomfort running down my spine. Something is wrong. My eyes dart from one side of the street to the other, searching for movement, but the shadows are as deep and dark as pools of ink, and I see nothing. I can't stay here. I need to reach the busier part of the city. Drawing my cloak tighter around my body, body I hope I hurry on my way. <laughs> Though I keep my eyes sharp and listen intently, there's only the sound of my own footsteps. As the moments pass and nothing happens, I begin to wonder. Maybe I really did imagine that noise. I'm going to gaslight myself. That seems like the best thing to do here. I turn the next quarter. Corner. You know what? If, uh, if we're messing up this many words, that means we have to take a little bit of a hydration. Labyrinth Labyrinthine mural? Labyrinthine? Like T-H-I-N-E? Thine? Labyrinthine? I want to say labyrinthine for some reason, and I don't know why. Um... <laughs> yeah i've i have not traveled to the middle east oh bye ghosty thank you so much again for the super chat i hope you have a great day bye ghosty i won't go too much longer um i turn the next corner and my thoughts are screaming to a halt my head spins the world blurring as adrenaline rushes through my veins. Only one thing is clear amidst the haze. Oh, it's a baddie. We got a big baddie. Now we need exciting. <laughs> it's a big bad. <laughs> you let me know if the music is too big or too whatever. The soul is that attacks the caravan. It's crouched over a dark and distinct shape, a body, a garland of intestines sparkling. <laughs> the, 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 the way the wordsmithing on this is so good, but also when I read it, I'm all like, bleh, gross. Um, <laughs> a garland of intestines spills from pallid flesh. Blood grouts the cobblestones. For a mercy, the solace is too distracted by its meal to have noticed me. My feet feel as heavy as stones, but I just can't stand there. Holding my breath, I take a step backwards. When the wet, slurping sounds don't abate, I take another, then another. Then a shard of glass crunches under my heel. 
The world seems to slow to a crawl as the souls raises its head, blood dripping from its tendrils. Every single one of them. Uh, I'm having a thought. Oh, oh, thank you. Thanks, for you. I really appreciate the. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. I am having fun. And honestly, I have more fun with all of you guys, to be honest. It's just more fun to play this um, when there's other people to play with. Uh, no, no, not, don't yay on the more Clover Fluster. <laughs> I gotta get better at the recovery. I have to get better at the recovery because otherwise it, it can't be interesting to just... <laughs> okay, 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 we're slowing down. I'm going to breath and recover. <clears throat> not not clear our throat by a million times. Not do that. Not clear our throat by a million times. Okay. <sighs> also, I wonder if, like, if humans she touches turn crazy, but if she touches a soulless, like, would the soulless... Because they seem kind of crazy already. Like, could she touch a soulless and have the soulless go, like, uncrazy? Um... Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry to super interrupt, to super interrupt you. Um, no, I can, I can recover, I can do it, I can do the thing. Uh, okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, the world seems to, oh, no, we need to read this all, all scary, like, the world seems to slow to a crawl as the soulless raises its head, blood dripping from its tendrils, every single one of its bulging eyes fix unblinkingly on me. It's really here, it's come back for me. Yeah, there's only one. <laughs> Run, sis. I'm off like a shot, running for my life through the darkened streets. Behind me, a piercing bay splits the silence, and heavy footfalls pound after me. My heart thunders in my chest. I take turns at random, trying to lose it in a maze of streets, but I can't seem to shake it. I can hear it breathing now, a wet, fluttering rasp, growing closer and closer. The same claws that severed my arms wipe out. I duck, saved by pure reflex, and skid around a corner. I take three running strides before the bottom drops out. My bottom drops out of my stomach? A wall twice as high as me bars my way. A dead end. Hi, random kun. We're running from a soulless. When I turn around, the soulless looms in the entry to the alleyway. It's no longer running. It doesn't have to. As it prowls closer, my thoughts race. Some of the buildings lining the streets are lit. There must be people inside. It's a long shot, but... We're gonna... We're gonna try the nearest door. I whirl, grabbing at the handle of the closest door. It turns completely... Oh, it turns completely, the hinges creaking as I push, and I feel a flash of hope before a weight hits the door from the other side, and it slams shut. What? The click of the lock turning its grimly... Oh, no. In this wretched world, few... Uh, few? Few people will stick out their neck... Uh, in this wretched world, few people will stick their neck out to help their own flesh and blood, never mind a stranger. The solace gives a rasping hiss. It's the only warning I get before it lunges for me with a flash of claws. I hurl myself to the side, but the slick cobblestones betray me. I fall, sprawling over onto the rough stone. As the solace looms over me, I scramble away from it until it backs into the wall. Backs... Uh, until my back hits the wall. There's nowhere left to go. It descends on me for the kill. I hope we're not saved by another person. But the impact never comes. Oh, ooh, we're gonna need a, a some sort of tissue or something. I warily crack open one eye, then the other. I'm not sure what I... Oh, we should probably change this to me? I warily crack open one eye. One eye open. One eye open. I warily crack one eye open, then in the other. Not sure whether I should believe what I'm seeing. A hooded figure crouches in front of me. One blood-stained hand outstretched. Moonlit sliv- uh, Moonlight sliv- Sliv- uh, we're gonna- <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> that monster looks kind of hot. Random, that's a big red flag. That's a big red flag right there. Mm-hmm. I should have kicked the door down, Ron. You're totally right. <laughs> Moonlight. So, oh, Big Z. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the, the super chat. Thank you so much. I hope that you have a fun time at the gym. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. XY, XOXO. Have a good one, Big Z. Um, thanks. Okay, I'm going to try to recover. But also, you have a good time. Uh, uh, many, many good lifts to you, Big Z. Many good lifts. White hair dude. 
Oh, bye, Striker Prime. Thanks so much for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I know it's a, it's a, everyone's got to kind of get ready for Monday. Um, Moonlight, <laughs> Moonlight silvers the edge of their stiletto knife. Their face and hands are splattered with blood, and the soulless, my eyes dart past with an unexpected, un my unexpected rescuer to the misshapen form behind them. The soulless's many eyes, once restless and vibrant, now look dull and waxy. A pool of red, slow, ugh, a red pool slowly from under its body. Numb with shock, I can't help but stare. It's dead. After all the people it's killed, after nearly killing me twice, I can hardly, hardly believe it. What kind of voice would this person have? Well, uh, all the boys are gonna sound the same. <laughs> Just gonna sound the same. <laughs> Mondays, am I right? Yeah. So many red flags. <laughs> I gingerly take the offered hand. The stranger's gaze dips to my bandages. Pale lips part on the brink of a question, then close again. With the strength belying their slight frame, they pull me to my feet. As soon as I'm on my own two feet again, they pull away from me and start wiping blood from their face and hands. Stay there. They look grumpy. We're going to give them a grumpy voice. All these boys are kind of grumpy except for Leander. They turn away from me stiffly, leaning over the Solus's gangly body. With their back towards me, I realize that their hooded silhouette... I saw their sil hooded silhouette at the Synovium. Wow. What... What terrible... <laughs> Who would, you're shorter than I thought. You're not as tall. I thought that you would be taller. You're totally a shorty. Um, we're not going to say that. I've seen you before. You were at the Synovium earlier, weren't you? They cast a wary look at me. So what if I was? Their harsh response takes me aback. Before I can formulate a response, they continue. What are you thinking, traveling alone at night? This is far from the worst thing... Uh, th this is far from the worst thing haunting Lowtown. I can't make heads or tails of them. First they saved me, and now they scold me? Lesson learned. I could do without the lecture, though. To my surprise, they break eye contact. Their attention glides back to the Solus's corpse. They examine it with inscrutable, an inscrutable expression. I clear my throat to fill the silence. Oh, great! I can actually clear my throat, and it's part of the. I can throw. I can clear my throat, and it's part of the narrative. Ahem. <laughs> I'm, I'm Clover. Min. Suddenly, Min tenses. Their blade flashes as they drive it into the back of the Solus's neck. The Solus thrashes once, letting out a rattling hiss as the air leaves its lungs. Min leans on the blade, driving it deeper and deeper until there's a sickening crunch, and the creature goes limp. Uh, my heart thuds in my... Sorry, I just saw... Yeah, I love the Sundaris. Frosty, you're totally right. I think that everyone's pretty grumpy in this world. It's a pretty grim world. I, I, okay, well, everybody gets a grumpy pass. My heart thuds in my chest. It must have been clinging to life by a thread. Min straightens up, withdrawing their blade in a single smooth motion. Better to put wretched things like this out of their misery. They calmly clean the blood from their knife. That swift, unhesitating, lethal strike wasn't the work of an amateur. But they don't act like any of the cold-blooded killers I've seen in the past. Why is a soulless inside the city? Min looks at me, eyes searching before realization dawns. You're new here. There's no walls around the city. Soulless can come and go as they please. Until someone is contracted to stop them. Why haven't we put walls around the city, y'all? We can put walls around the city. There's enough of us. I'm sure we could hire some people to put some walls around the city so that we ain't got to worry about the monsters no more. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that is, uh, uh, you know, just a myth. Somebody should have really looked at this in city planning. The Cenobium's patrols don't bother to protect Lowtown. Not anymore. Let me guess you're not a fan of the Cenobium. I wouldn't go that far. Their brow abruptly furrows and they sheathe their knife, motioning for me to follow them. It's not safe here. The vultures can smell death. I'm not quite sure what they mean, but I don't want to stay lost in the city. I trail behind them as they stride down the street. If it's so dangerous, then why are you helping me? I came for the bounty on that Solus, and you were in the way. Not killing you isn't the same as helping you. Don't count on being so lucky again, or you'll be dead by sunrise. Their answer is stingingly harsh. You know what? Fine. You know what? 
fine. I hold my hands up, trying to forestall any more snippy comments. All right, I get it. I'd love to get out of your way, but I'm sort of lost. I just need directions back to my lodgings. What makes you think I'll help you? Nothing, but there's no harm in asking. That seems to catch them off guard. Their brows knit, and they look away, scowling. How troublesome. Clover? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Is it going to be Andrew? Clover? Oh my god, Clover? <laughs> oh, it's Karash. Okay. Uh, I turn, surprised by the voice. Karash walks down the street towards me. His white and gold clothing is pristine, despite the grime of the city. Uh, let's see. How about something a little more chill? Um, I forgot what voice we gave Karash. Didn't we give Karash, like, a big sexy lady voice? Like, a super sexy lady voice? Hell, not even a Chikawa fits. Whoa, what is this, Attack on Titan? <laughs> Take no shit from him. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna do sexy lady voice. Hello, Min. I see that the solace was your work. Min shrugs. There's a familiarity to the way they regard each other. You know them, Karash? Min is a freelancer who has done a few errands for me. They're quite reliable. Unreliable freelancers don't eat. True this, true this. That should be on, that should be like mini freelancers. Uh, just need to hang that above my monitor. <laughs> There's something Karash isn't saying here. Clover needs to get back to wherever she's staying before she wanders into the jaws of another soulless. It is late. Were you able to find a place to stay, Clover? I'm staying at the Wet Wick. Both of their faces fall. <laughs> I see. Would you like a guide? It might be preferable to wandering around alleyways. That would be nice. Min clicks their tongue and sighs, sounding mightily put out. Going to the Amaryllis? Amaryllis? Going to the Amaryllis district? That gaudy cesspit? Come, this way. Despite Min's clear distaste, when Karash leads me down the street, they keep pace with us. Keeping my curious glance, Min's eyes narrow. It's not safe this late. I don't care about you, but Karash is the only doctor worth a damn in this place. Are you like this with everyone? The deadpan look Min gives me is answer enough. I catch Karash hiding a slight smile. I suppress a sigh and resign myself to having a grumpy shadow all the way back to the wet wick. They are so grumpy. I'm a realist. Thank you. Amaryllis. Oh, they're a foot apart. <laughs> Killing more people. <laughs> the route Karash takes is completely different from my slow mirandering one. Um, from my slow mirandering earlier this morning. Earlier in the morning. In no time at all, he cuts through the dark, darkened streets, twisting alley. And twist it. We're just gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going, you guys. Don't, don't you worry about any flubbing. Ooh, it's so pretty with the lights up at night. I love lights. Oh, and that's the pink curtain place. We remember what happens there, right? Ah, it seems like half the city has poured into the Amaryllis districts. Amaryllis districts, colorful streets. Laughter, clinking glasses, and music assault my ears from every direction. Which I don't know if I have any cool music for that. Do I have any cool music for that? Um, nope. <laughs> I feel like, I really wish the developers would like make the music uh, wouldn't copyright strike the music so that I could play it because it, it sounds really good when I played the first little bit like I want to go back and replay this with the music um oh bye Rick Thero. have a good one I'll see you uh I'll see you on the next stream or I'll see you around bye thanks so much again for the super chat I hope you have a good day okay let's see um Yet the noise still comes from the wet wick. It hangs, uh, its doors hang wide open, lanterns lit. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Here we are. He moves towards the door and Min lets out an audible huff. Don't tell me you're going in. 
I have some quick business with Leander. Oh, all of the boys know each other. This is going to be um, awkward if we all fall in love with each other. <laughs> Fine, he still owes me for yesterday's work. They drag their feet, reluctantly trailing me into the tavern. As soon as the doors open, a wave of sticky heat rolls over me. In the hours since I left, the wick has grown suffocatingly crowded. Karash stands out, easily a head taller than most. Even so, I nearly lose sight of him amid the sea of swarming bodies. Pardon me. The crowd parts as though answering his request. Karash glances over his shoulder, shoulder at Min and me before gliding through. How can anyone breathe in here? Min follows Karash at a clipped pace. Oh, it's our nice boy. Leander is right where I left him, although he's traded places with the bartender. He holds a pair of shot glasses filled to the brim with luminous green liquid. And, oh, didn't we give him Andrew voice? Yeah. And now for the finishing touch. A flash of magic paints the glasses white with frost. You're never going to guess what's in these. Leander slides the glasses across the bar, and I get my third and fourth shocks of the evening in rapid succession. Oh, <laughs> they're all here! Ace leans against the bar, an elbow propped up on the counter. He catches the glasses and lifts one to the light before turning it upside down. The contents magically congealed stay firmly in place. Shot, 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 shots! A past X, maybe? Hey, it's the one with the less red flags. No, they're all... They, yeah, these are all... These are the, I guess Leander is, like, the least red flaggy out of everybody. If you had to give them, like, a red flag count one to five, Leander's, like, a two, maybe? You're supposed to make drinks, pretty boy. Don't tell me you're wasted already. Veer, perched on the bar's counter beside Ace, takes a single look at the shot glass and shakes his head. What have we here? Here, not here. I got distracted because he has ears, and that's what, that's what happened. What have we here? What have we... Not here. Not here. Drinking. Drinking. What have we here? A bucket full of boogers. Leander's nose treasure. You've eaten worse. Veer's lips twitch and his ears flatten when Ace offers him a glass. He turns his cheek with a sniff, and Ace just snickers. Coward. It's the grin. It's the smirky grin for me. It's the smirky grin that does it. Oh my goodness. A tee hee. A tee hee. Don't tell me you're actually. In one fluid motion, Ace throws back his head and downs the shot. Drinking that. A dark look crosses Ace's face. It's chewy. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Chewy. Wait, uh, let me try again. Behind me, Min grumbles. I told you this place was a nest of degenerates. Hey guys, did we save? Have we saved? Did we forget to save again? We're just gonna keep saving on the second one. We're just gonna, that way I know which one is which. <laughs> did we? Uh, save fails both times I've done this. What if something happened? Uh, anyway, I told you this place was a nest of degenerates. A nest of degenerates should have been what I called the Clo Clover Club. Right, right, right. We're all a little degenerate. Right, right, right. <laughs> JK, we're all cool people here. If it isn't Karash and Min! At the sound of Leander's voice, Min's pale eyes grow wide. They look ready to bolt until Karash sets out hand under their shoulder. I promise this will not take long. Min's eyes dart from Karash's hand to his face, then soften. Fine, you first. While they step forward, I linger behind, struck by a sudden revelation. All of the people I've met today know each other. Good evening, Leander. Ace. Another drinking competition, I presume? <laughs> They're all here! It's the gang! Oh, is it evening already? Could have sworn it was earlier. Just some friendly rivalry, Doctor. Nothing to be afraid of. Karash acknowledges Leander and Ace with the slightest nod, ignoring Veer entirely. Not that Veer seems to mind. Oh... Fear doesn't have many friends. He tilts his head and an impish smile curves his lips when he spots Min looming silently behind Karash. I almost didn't see you there, Min. Looking for your booster seat. This is why you don't have many friends of your. You gotta stop making fun of people, okay? 
until you have a relationship where you can make fun of people, you know? It takes a little while to be able to roast friends lovingly. Min pushes back their hood. They level Veer with a cool look. I thought Ace wasn't allowed to bring his pets in here. Veer's tail gives an angry twitch. Oh, we're gonna get a group shot? Group photo? Group photo? At the first sign of, impen of an impending fight, Leander vaults over the counter. He slides between Ace and Crash. <laughs> now, now, let's try and keep the peace. It's not every day the esteemed doctor takes up, takes us up on a drink. His arm snakes around Karash's shoulders. You're finally taking me up on that drink, right, Karash? You are, oh wait, you are finally taking me up on that drink, right, Karash? I'm afraid not. We were merely escorting Clover back to her lodgings. Karash gestures in my direction and my stomach sinks. I reluctantly step into the light. As soon as he sees me, Leander's face brightens. Clover, it's been too long. Everyone, this is Clover. She's new to Iridia. I feel five pairs of eyes fix onto me, and suddenly the bar feels very suffocatingly small. My voice nearly catches in my throat. Oh, are we going to say we've already met her? Hi again. Uh, well, Clover says hi again. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, again. Again? Wait, you've already met everyone? <laughs> Ace and Veer level me with subtly amused expressions. Veer's tail gives a lazy wag. We did. Not that long ago, either. Hmm. I'm starting to suspect she's stalking me. He looks far too pleased with himself when I roll my eyes. Hey, guys. Oh, the guy's here. Woohoo! Oh, hey, Anon. Good to see you. This calls for drinks. What does everyone want? In an instant, all their eyes turn to Leander, freeing me from the burden of attention. I still can't believe they all know each other. Watching them talk amongst themselves feels surreal. For the first time since I undertook the journey to Iridia, I feel a faint glimmer of hope. I think... No, I know I was meant to meet them. The low, pleasant rumble of Leander's laughter pulls me from my restless thoughts. Ha! <laughs> well, color me surprised. You make friends fast, Clover. I wouldn't go that far. We're more like... acquaintances? A wise man once said that acquaintances are merely friends you haven't shared a drink with yet. A wise man? You said that. Here. Last week. I can hear Min's lip curl with distaste from across the bar. Leander clears his throat and continues unperturbed. <clears throat> Let's toast to Clover's health. Care to join in, doctor? Karash politely declines with a wave of his hand. How about you, Min? No. Are you... No. A resounding pop pierces the din of the bar. We all turn in the direction of that noise. Veer looks almost bashful as he accepts an overflowing flute from the bartender. Poured from a bottle so old its label has been worn blank. They serve champagne here? Since when? <laughs> wow, Leander is is that drinker. We love that. We love someone who's just kind of like, what? There's stuff other than Miller High Life? Um, Veer pauses in the middle of licking champagne foam from his fingers with a coy smile. You don't mind, do you? In a transformation as impressive as a magic trick, the concern of Leander's face vanishes. He laughs softly. No, be my guest. I know you've got expensive taste. <laughs> then he shoots the bartender a frantic look. <laughs> Unbothered or uninterested in his company, Ace cants his head at me, a light smile on his lips. How about you, Sparrow? I did say I'd buy you a drink earlier. No, 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 my treat. Yes, fight over me! No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't know what I would do. I think if anything like this happened, I would just kind of be like, I'm gonna go sit in a booth by myself and kind of think about my day. I did see someone die this morning. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Um, anyway, no, we're back to this. Back to the sillies. Having five hotties look at me would melt. Yeah, I would absolutely melt. Um, let's see. Sorry, just check in chat. Hope you guys are doing okay over here. Ah, I think this is going to wrap up soon, so we can finish soon. What'll it be, Clover? I'll take that drink, yeah. I'll take you up in that drink, as long as it's not one of those green shots. Don't knock them till you've tried them. They taste better than they look. Somehow I doubt that, but I hold my tongue long enough for Leander to go behind the bar. He's lying, isn't he? When I glance at Ace, he only shrugs. Like I said, they were chewy. Probably poisoned, too. He considers his own drink, a tumbler of amber-colored whiskey. I'll, I'm a whiskey drinker myself. 
but I am also not a rock. Well, we'll see. Anyway, Leander's tried. Leander's tried to kill me a dozen times by now. It's always a gamble. Veer clicks his tongue in disapproval. When he finally looks my way, it's with half a half-lidded gaze, softened by his third glass of champagne. Wow, he did three glasses that fast. Champagne makes me so giggly. I become like a really terrible mess. But I love champagne. Um, were I you, I wouldn't let Leander put anything in my mouth. <laughs> He fans his fingers over his chest, voice dripping with fake reverence. The Wet Wick is one of the finest drinking establishments in all of Iridia. While you're here, you may as well partake of the signature watered-down drinks and stale nut leather. He sweeps his hand towards a clipped ceramic bowl filled with spindly speckled jerky that I can only assume is nut leather. What is with the food in this city? As abysmal as you make it sound, this place is completely packed. It's not all bad. Depending on the day, the food's edible. <laughs> um, Ace takes a measured sip of his drink. Gotta stick around for the real attractions, though. Before I can ask what he means, Leander returns with a tumbler that he sets in front of me. Uneven chunks of ice bob in a pool of reddish-purple alcohol. I sniff the drink suspiciously. To my relief, this time, all I smell is the sharp, clean scent of gin with an undercurrent of fermented fruit. Yes, gin! Gin and tonics are the best thing for summer, and it's starting to really heat up here, and I'm like, ugh, what a GMT. Dot, dot, dot. Relax, it's just the local specialty, plum gin. Although, if you're feeling more adventurous... I shake my head. Leander wraps his knuckles against the bar until the group falls silent. All right, everyone, let's toast. May Clover's stay in Iridia be full of bright adventures and discoveries. Cheers! Leander, Ace, and Veer raise their glasses in unison. Min only crosses their arms, and Karash watches with polite indifference. I tip back my drink. The plum gin is eye-wateringly strong. Despite a sharp medicinal edge, it goes down smooth. One sip softens the edge of my vision. The next fades the din of the crowd <laughs> crowded bar into a low, persistent murmur. I find myself unwinding for what feels like the first time in years. Cheers, squad. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, fam. Cheers to you. Thanks so much for watching this stream. I appreciate y'all being here so much. Aren't you a popular one, Clover? I'm guessing you met Karash first. It would be more accurate to say that I found her. He saved my life. I merely performed my duty as a doc- Duty. Duty as a doctor. Although I must admit I was confused when I woke up missing all my clothes. Leander makes a choked noise, somewhere behind him in size. It's not what you think. Clover was in grave condition. I could hardly treat her injuries through tattered clothes. Clothes. The, the, the silence that follows stretches uncomfortably long. I look away, unable to face Crush's disappointment, and catch Veer snickering behind his hand. That's my cue to change the topic. Yep, that is that is me. I will drop an awkward bomb everywhere. I will just sit there and be like, hi, oversharing? Oops, okay, <laughs> my bad. Crash isn't the only one who saved me today. Yeah, did everyone literally save her today except for Leander? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, everyone did. Aw, oh, thanks, Respawn. Don't you listen. I didn't save you. You were simply there. That's men for you. Leander reaches for men, but they duck under their arm with practiced ease without so much as looking his way. As reliable as they are moody. You're one to talk, considering you neglected to warn her to stay off the streets at night. Oh, uh, I might have gotten a little distracted. <laughs> Min's only, sorry, I don't know why that got me real flustered. Min's only response is a short breath. At any rate, I never got a chance to thank you, Min. Don't. The less soul is alive, the better. For a heartbeat, Min's eyes flick towards Ace, and their lips twist. Oh, is Ace a soulless? No. Hi, Goron's beard. I'm so glad you could make it. Thanks for joining us. We're we've met all of the uh, the the boys, all of the the touch starved boys, uh, and now we're all having a drink together. Ace is too busy nodding along to Veer's enthusiastic pantomime of stabbing to notice, lost no doubt in an enthralling discussion. I've had enough of this hellhole. Let's go. 
<laughs> That's gonna be how I exit every room from now on. I'm just gonna anytime I go to the store, if I head if I head to groceries, I'm gonna, I am I'm tired of this hellhole. Let's go. Um, Men and Crash share a brief look, then the doctor speaks up. Very well, but there is something that I must discuss with Leander, if you'll excuse us, Clover. And just like that, the three of them depart, leaving me alone to savor my gin in silence. Or so I think, until I hear a voice so soft and low it's practically a purr. I'm gonna switch the music around just because sometimes, sometimes, we just want to have different tunes, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oversharing is caring. Do, 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 do. Ah! Um, so, let's do a little agua. I say water because it is melted. Everything is melted from my icy cup. Um, let's see. Or so I think until I hear a voice so soft it's practically a purr. Lost your tour guide. I turn to find crimson and pink eyes trained on me. It's not lost on me that they chose the instant the others left to strike. Just my luck. Yes, lucky girl! Hi, Brian King. Thank you for joining. I had to be abandoned with the two most irritating people I've met all day. Monsters or not, they're not, they're, there's no telling what I'll do if either of them push me again. Hopefully they both push. Don't tell me Leander already snuck off to get his knob slobbered out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fear for being someone who's like in the upper echelons of society. You speak with such less delicate words. He's got business with Karash and men. Two on one business, hmm? Isn't he lucky? I can't tell if it's the champagne or the company, but Veer has grown noticeably more relaxed. He sits with his chin propped up on the back of his hand. His ears twitch whenever a hiccup shakes his shoulders. Why are you so far away? <laughs> Come, join us. He pats the empty bar stool beside Ace, but I hesitate. The smile Veer wears is sweet and distinctly sly. With the drinks in the mix, I dread how he and Ace will mess with me next. We don't bite. I'm not sure about that. Just an hour ago, he tried to rob me, and you threatened me. Me? Steal? Surely you're mistaken. Hmm, you sure it was me? Yes, it was you. And then you had the gall to kick me out just so you could go drinking. He gives me another one of his shrugs. I was lonely. A simple, a simpler answer than I expected, but I guess I can't fault him for that. Veer suddenly slumps forward, gossamer sleeves pooling where he rests his elbows on his knees. Ace sets his hand on Veer's waist, narrowly preventing him from tipping off the counter. How about we start fresh, hmm? Begin with proper introductions, get off on the right foot and whatnot. I'll start. The name's Veer, Hunter Extraordinaire. Veer's right hand flutters to his chest, and he bows his head, flinching when his hair falls into his eyes. Ace doesn't say anything, so I suppose it's my turn now. You already know who it is. I'm gonna say you already know my- am I gonna be snippy at these guys? No, let's be nice. Nice or snippy? Nice or snippy? I am not sure. Let's be... Oh, this is why we would save, right? We would go, we would save here, and then if the choice is bad, we would come back. Yes, now we are playing the game correctly. You already know my name. I'm certain you already know my name. Hard not to when Leander shouts it every other second. Veer tips back his head and drains the rest of the champagne. It's a pleasure to formally meet you, Clover. He says my name slowly and deliberately, savoring every syllable. A, sing a tingle jumps down my spine. I quickly turn my gaze away. Ace smirks at my reaction over the rim of his glass. Is something funny? Hmm. Nope. He's so cavalier. <laughs> Pro gamer with that quick save. Yeah, we forgot Goran's beard. Um, I forgot to save like 45 minutes into the stream. I totally forgot. <laughs> and then we got back to it. I'm going to put on some different tunes because this is kind of like ugh, the tunes are just not the bestest. I, I really need to get some better music on this thing. Um, Wamp, wham. Maybe this one? 
that seems, yeah, that's that's good bar music. We're just gonna keep this bar music here. <laughs> Gosh, I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna go. Once again, I did not have an endpoint in mind, but I think that I might end shortly. Um, I thought after the big the big boys on the on sitting on the table, I was like, whew. Oh, don't worry, Ryan. I understand. Don't worry. I will I will be wrapping up shortly. Um, but thank you for stopping by anyway. Uh, let's see. Mistakes are learning opportunities. Indeed. Every mistake is a learning opportunity. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I open my mouth and close it just as quickly. They want me to react, goading me into another ridiculous game. While their sharp cat-like eyes keep me on edge, something about this tension is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It is something about the tension is very fun. I'm almost done until the next cop. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Thank you for all the lore, Zodia. This is really helpful. It must be the djinn. A flash of white over Ace's, sho Ace's shoulders catches my eye. Across the bar, Karash's heads for the door. I don't see Leander or Min, but it feels wrong to let him leave without saying goodbye. Uh, I'll be back. Veer hums and wags his fingers at me as I leave. Mm -mm. I slip through the crowd, careful not to touch anyone, but just as I'm nearing Karash... Gah! Gah? Gah! I stagger, shoulder-checked by a man with a neck thicker than both my thighs. He stares down at me, nostrils staring, flaring, roughneck. Out of my way, shit stain! My words spill out on their own. You watch it! You watch it? I regret them as soon as they leave my mouth. That fucking gin! The roughneck wheels around, shoving a bloodhound out of the way so he can close in on me. What did you say? Oh, now the music, the music is too chill. Uh-oh, now the music's too chill. Uh, maybe we do this one? Oh. He shoves me backwards, sending me stumbling to the sticky floor. I'm fine, but my heart leaps into my throat when I see a roughneck bearing down on me. You trying to start something here? Oh wait, no, the bloodhound, no, that's fine, they're gonna sound the same. The roughneck freezes, his fist cocked back. A group of blood, sorry, I did not mean to stumble on the word cocked. Um, a group of bloodhounds called by the commotion circle him, sizing him up. What feels like an agonizingly long moment, the roughneck looks from me to the bloodhounds. Finally, he sniffs and spits on the floor next to me. The lob narrowly misses my cheek. Ew. Screw it. Too many freaks in the circle t the circus tonight. He turns his back on me and comes face to face with Ace. <laughs> Thank you, Ace. <laughs> A dangerous smile spreads across his face. You'll do. You'll do. What happens next is a blur. Ace's fist crashes into the rough neck straw, crossing an eruption of gasps, shouts, and even cheers around us. <laughs> Teehee. I scramble to my feet right as the frantic crowd swarms around me, cutting off my sight of everything and everyone. Through the ruckus, I hear Leander shouting. Hey, hey, Ace, take it outside. Ignore them, everyone. Look, drinks on me. <laughs> Everything's cool here. There's nothing to see here. With those four words, the wick erupts into hoots and hollers. The ring around me disperses up as bloodhounds and onlookers rush towards the bar. Through the thinning, thinning crowd, I catch a glimpse of familiar faces. Ace vanishes out the back, dragging the roughneck behind him. Karash lingers near the door, searching, I suspect, for any wounded before he departs. Min draws their hood up tight as they slip out the side door. There's many doors in this bar. There's three doors. <laughs> While Veer leans over the counter to swipe a glass of wine from behind the bar. And Leander, seated at opposite bar, gestures dramatically and apologetically to the bartender. <laughs> in the space of a heartbeat, I realize that there's no telling when or if I'll see any of them ever again. Whoever I pursue may be the last person I get to speak to tonight. I follow. Ooh. Okay. This is the, uh, oh my gosh. Would you, would you guys hate me if I left on a um, cliffhanger? Because I kind of think I need to. Uh, mostly because I have to get going soon. Um, let's see. Well, well, don't hate me. Don't hate me, but I think we are. I think we are going to... Each guy gets 20 minutes, and I recommend doing all five. Okay, okay. Zodia, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for letting me know about all the all the, the ins and outs of this. I think we are going to pause there um, and just kind of go back to it. I hope that everyone had a good time. And then we'll start the next stream. I'll try to get another one soon. We'll start the next stream, and then everybody can have a little vote, and we can see who goes first. Because um, I would love to do all these. 
I'm going to try not to play it without you guys because I really do want to see what Ace does. Tee hee tee hee. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty anxious. Yeah, cliffhanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, you guys. This is so much fun. And I, oh, Meryl, thank you. Oh, thank you for the stream. Thanks, Meryl. I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, you guys are awesome. This is so much fun. I love being able to do this with you guys. Uh, and I, I just can't wait for the next one. <laughs> um, so anyway, I hope that you all have a wonderful, um, I'm trying to recover quickly. Thank you, Meryl. I'm, I'm all... <laughs> I'm all pink in the cheeks now. Um, okay. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you are excited for the next one uh, since we did leave on such an awful cliffhanger. Um, but I'm hoping that we can get it started pretty soon. Uh, let's see. Thank you for calling it a success. I hope it was. And I hope we had 10% less scuff and at least 5% less throat clearing uh, with me being a nervous Nelly and all that. <laughs> um yeah, big thanks, Sonia. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, it's, it's always good to have someone who's a little ahead of the game uh, so I can sit there and be like, can I finish now? Because I don't want to spoil it. You know how it goes? Um, all right, guys. I hope everybody has a good night. I have some audios coming up this week, so hopefully we'll get those out soon. And uh, you all have a very good one. And big hugs. Thanks, guys. Bye.